John here with the Columbia River Orienteering Club in Portland, Oregon. Our video today will cover the UTM coordinate system. Coordinate systems are useful because they can specify any location on Earth, sort of like a street address. UTM stands for Universal Transverse Mercator, and it's a metric system created by the U.S. Army in the 1940s. A good way to think of it is a huge grid of one meter squares laid over a map of the entire Earth. Here's what we're going to cover. We'll start with an overview of how the system works, then you'll learn how to read coordinates from a map, how to plot coordinates onto a map, and we'll finish with a few good mapping and smartphone resources. There are two good reasons to understand coordinate systems. One, if you need a rescue, you can tell 911 right where you are. And two, if you're lost and you have a GPS or a phone app, you can plot the coordinates onto your map and get yourself unlost. Before we dive into UTM, let's have a brief look at another coordinate system, latitude and longitude. This system is the oldest and most widely used. Most everyone has at least heard of it, and it's used by your GPS. Latitude longitude works great for ships and airplanes, but UTM is preferred for land navigation. And here's a few reasons why. Easy base 10 metric system. One way to write coordinates, not three different ones, like with latitude and longitude. It's easy to determine coordinates from a map, plot coordinates onto a map, and if you need to, shorten or truncate the coordinates, which we'll see in a little bit. UTM coordinates are always given in a specific order, zone, easting, and northing. Remember high school geometry and XY coordinates? UTM works in pretty much the same way. The zone is one of 60 tall, skinny rectangles that cover the Earth. The X coordinate, or horizontal axis, is called an easting. The Y coordinate, or the vertical axis, is called a northing. And here's an example in yellow of a complete UTM coordinate. Let's have a look at the zone. UTM zones divide the world into 60 tall, skinny rectangles, each one of them 6 degrees of longitude wide. Zone 1 starts at the international date line, and then moving east in 6 degree increments, the zones increase in number moving around the globe. As we see here, the U.S. is covered from Zone 10 to Zone 19. Where I am in Western Oregon happens to be in Zone 10. Because we can't put a rectangular grid exactly over the curved surface of the Earth, the UTM zones actually are widest at the equator and narrow as they approach the pole. Now, the following few slides might get a little map geeky, but try to bear with me. XY coordinate systems always have a starting point. Technically speaking, the point of origin for each zone is the intersection of the zone's central meridian and the equator. To avoid dealing with negative numbers, this central meridian has a value of 500,000. For example, an easting coordinate of 450,000 means that it's 50 kilometers west of this central meridian. The Y coordinate, or northing, is a little easier to understand. Northing values start at zero at the equator for the northern hemisphere and increase as we go north. In the southern hemisphere, northern values start at 10 million at the equator and decrease as you move south. Here's another way to think about the origin points for UTM coordinates. While this model may not be technically correct, it may be a little easier to understand. Here we have a UTM zone in the northern hemisphere. Imagine a tall, skinny, one meter grid centered exactly over this zone. The grid is 10 million meters tall and 1 million meters wide. The 500,000 meters east line is centered directly over the central meridian of the zone. So you can think of the 0, 0 origin of the XY coordinates as being the lower left corner of the tall, skinny 1 meter grid. This is where 0 easting and 0 northing begin for this particular zone, if it's easier for you to think of it that way. Ah, whew! The map nerd stuff is over. If you didn't fully understand those last few slides, no worries, because in the real world, UTM is actually really simple. Easting values increase as we move east on a map. Easting values are always going to be six digits. On this grid, we see the easting increase by one kilometer each square as we move to the east. Northing values increase as we move north, and northing values, at least in North America, are always seven digits. On this grid, we see the northing increase by one kilometer each square as we move to the north. This slide shows why it can be important to specify what zone you're in. Here we have the exact same coordinate, easting 500,000, northing 5 million. Notice that this one coordinate plots in three very different places in zones 10, 11, and 12. 
This actually repeats all around the world, so any easting and northing coordinate pair could actually be in any one of 60 different zones. So if you're communicating your UTM coordinates to someone and there's even a tiny uncertainty about what zone you're in, it's best practice to specify it. There is one additional aspect to a complete UTM coordinate, and that is the latitude band. This is a letter designation which tells you if the coordinate is in the northern or southern hemisphere. Now, you hopefully know what hemisphere you're in already, so most users can pretty much ignore latitude bands. But technically, it's part of a complete UTM coordinate, and you will see it on some GPS readouts, so it's worth mentioning. While a GPS will give you a coordinate that's precise to one meter, often you don't need to be this exact. For example, if you want to plot the coordinates from your GPS onto your map, your map is not going to be zoomed in enough to allow you to plot this accurately. So when using UTM coordinates on a map, we often change the digits in the ones and tens place to zero. Doing this gives a position to 100 meters, which most of the time is going to be close enough. And notice we're changing the last two digits to zero and not rounding off. Okay, enough with the theory. Let's see how this works on a simplified map. What are the coordinates of point X marked in green? Remember, the printed grid is one kilometer. Easting and northing coordinates are often abbreviated on a map border by dropping the last three digits, and the numbers showing the kilometers are often printed in bold, as we see here. First, let's look to the left of our point and find the closest easting line. Here, it's 611. Second, we look below the point and find the closest northing line. Here, it's 4591. This gives us the coordinates of the lower left corner of a one kilometer square that contains point X. So we're within a few hundred meters of where we want to go. Let's get a little closer. Now we estimate the location of point X to the nearest 100 meters. It might help to imagine a grid of 100 meter squares covering the one kilometer square that contains the point. Looking at point X, we see that it's just about midway between the 611 and the 612 easting lines. Because these easting lines are 1,000 meters apart, halfway is 500 meters. Estimating the northing, it looks like point X is just a little bit above the midway point. Again, because the northing lines are 1,000 meters apart, a little above midway makes it about 600 meters. So that gives us our final estimated coordinate of 611, 500 easting, 4591, 600 northing. Let's try this again with a real map. What are the coordinates for the summit of Mount Adams? First, we look to the left of the summit and find the closest easting line. Then we estimate the distance from that line to the summit to the nearest 100 meters. Here, it's about 400. Then we look below the summit and find the closest northing line. Then we estimate the distance from that northing line to the summit to the nearest 100 meters. Here, let's call that about 600. So that gives us the estimated position for the summit accurate to about plus or minus 100 meters. A map Romer, which was apparently named after the British guy who invented it, is a small clear plastic square with various navigation aids printed onto it. These are more commonly used in the military where plus or minus 100 meters is probably not good enough if you're calling in an artillery strike. Yes, they can give you a little more accurate measurements, but roamers are tiny, fragile, easily lost, and in my opinion, not needed by most civilian users. However, if you want to take a couple minutes to modify your compass, here's a quick way to make slightly more accurate UTM measurements. Put two narrow strips of white tape on the top and right edge of your compass. Place the top edge of your compass on the one kilometer scale bar of your map. With a fine tip pen, copy the 100 meter increments from the scale bar onto the tape. And repeat this for the right edge of your compass. When you're done, it should look something like this. Now, if you put the upper right corner of your compass on a map feature, you can instantly read the 100 meter increments of easting and northing. Here, Sisson Lake has an easting of 500 meters and a northing of 300 meters. Note that if you change to a map of a different scale, you have to make new tape marks to match. Well, hopefully you now have a basic understanding of finding the coordinates of a point on the map. Let's have a look at the flip side of that, which is plotting coordinates onto a map. Here's our scenario. You get lost, 
you open a UTM coordinate app on your smartphone and get your UTM coordinates. Then you plot those coordinates onto your map to find your point position. Step one, get your UTM coordinates. Step two, change the last two digits to zero. Remember, the precision of a complete UTM coordinate is one meter. We can't plot a coordinate with that precision on a map this size, so making them zeros makes it easier to plot and gives us our position within plus or minus 100 meters, which should be accurate enough. Step three, mark the easting line. You don't need to draw the entire line on your map. Usually just circling the number in the margin is good enough. Step four, mark the northing line below your point. Again, circling that number in the map margin works well. Step five, from this intersection, estimate east 500 meters and north 200 meters to find your location. Well, high fives to you. You found your position on the map to about 100 meter accuracy. Having these two tools, a GPS and a map with a UTM grid, means you can always determine your point position on a map, and that is a very powerful navigation tool. Of course, to do this, you need a map that has a UTM grid printed on it. Most of the seven and a half minute maps printed by the US Geological Survey have UTM tick marks on the margins, but do not have a printed grid. Many newer maps designed for recreation, like this one, do have a printed grid. Sometimes you'll see a complete coordinate, shown here in red, but often the coordinates are shortened down to the nearest kilometer, shown here in blue. One great option is to print your own maps with web software. My favorite mapping site is caltopo.com, which has free map viewing and printing, along with a great variety of base layers. Adding a UTM grid is done with one click. Here's a map of Mount Shasta in California with a UTM grid and climbing route drawn in. Another helpful feature in CalTOPO lets you find the coordinates of any point on Earth. The box in the upper right-hand corner shows the UTM coordinates, lat-long coordinates, and elevation of your mouse cursor. Personally, I think every backcountry user who carries a smartphone should at the very least know how to get their coordinates. If you have an emergency and you have cell phone coverage, you can tell 911 your exact position. Doing this takes the search out of search and rescue and probably means you're going to get help much faster. Note that many 911 call centers in the U.S. are not yet equipped to receive text messages. For now, it's better to text your situation and coordinates to your designated emergency contact person and have them forward the information to 911. Note that if you're on the edge of cell phone coverage or your battery is low, texting can sometimes get a better connection and be easier on your phone battery. And texting also allows you to transmit coordinates with no translation errors or mistakes. Here are a few ways to get your coordinates. One, of course, is a dedicated GPS receiver. These are heavy, expensive, and only do one thing, but they do have a long battery life, they're sturdy, and can often get a GPS signal in a canyon or under heavy tree cover better than a cell phone. Hey there, iPhone users. Did you know that the free built-in Compass app also shows your latitude and longitude? You can do a long press on this coordinate to copy and then paste it into a text or email. Yes, this is not a UTM coordinate, but it's all the information that 911 would need to find you in the backcountry. Here's a free smartphone app that I really like. It's called UTM Position Mailer. It shows your position in UTM and latitude longitude and allows you to text or email this position along with a message. Personally, I think every backcountry traveler should have an app like this on their phone and know how to use it. And when this video is over in about 30 seconds, go get it yourself. For you Android users, try this app, GPS Location. It does the same thing and it's also free. And finally, here's the best GPS wilderness phone app, Gaia GPS. Gaia turns your smartphone into a fully featured backcountry GPS, showing your real-time position over a variety of great quality base maps. I think it's well worth it to buy this app and spend an hour or so learning how to use it. I made a complete video tutorial on how to use Gaia GPS, and you can see it at croc.org. So that's it for the UTM coordinate system. Practice at home if you need to, review this video if anything was unclear, and hopefully this allows you to enjoy backcountry travel with increased safety and confidence. Thanks very much for watching, and if you found this video helpful, please give it a like and a favorable comment on YouTube.